I'm reliving my incredible adventures to bring you the amazing untold stories behind river monsters. In a remote part of Suriname, South America, we were suddenly thrust into an emergency by a bolt from the blue. The camera was rolling. I was doing a short piece to camera, and then suddenly there is just this almighty crash and a simultaneous flash of light. Without thinking at all, it was pure reflex. I just hit the deck because you do not want to be poking up above the ground in that kind of situation. Hey, should I take this off? I would. I would. Yeah? What he had, he had a, a device, a bit like a sort of a, a, a rucksack frame, but then with an arm coming over his head, and the camera was actually hanging off that. Yeah, that was running. Oh, my God. This that was right on top of the Take the ring off, yeah. We now want to just get in the boat and get out of here. Abandoning. Oh, We are abandoned. That was further away. Oh, one second. We're getting in the boat, and we're going. We're going. Let's go. Man, can I take a video? Oh, my God. Oh, I have never felt anything like that before. That was absolutely, literally meters away. That was insane. I think the worst moment of this whole uh, experience was getting in the boat, right far up the boat, we need to get out of here, and then suddenly the awareness that there is a body lying motionless in the bottom of the boat. And that was Chris, our sound man. Right, we might need some first aid here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go for it. Let's go OK, let's go. OK, let's go. Let's, let's go, go, let's go, let's go. Quick, quick, quick. What's happening, Jeremy? Jeremy, what's happening? Our sound recorder has been hit. It was actually struck on the head by that bolt of lightning. So we're going. We're going to, uh, we're going back to the Indian village. Peter is just administering some first aid to put some cold water on his head. It's very important to the rest of us, though, Keep our heads down. I think when I saw Chris in the bottom of the boat, I mean, that's one of those moments when it's actually something's happened to somebody else, but almost your own heart stops. For that very, very brief moment, they're not moving. And, and you know, they're, 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 are, are they dead? Are they going to die? Chris, are you OK? Can it, are you responding? This is someone who is part of your team. They're there to do a job, uh, but also you get very close to the people you, that you work with in this kind of situation, and, and you really feel for them. Um, Stitch has been hit by lightning, um, so we need to work out what, what, what we should do now. We need to phone the office, see whether we need to get an evac, we need to assess him and see... I knew what had happened, and I think from seeing a huge ball of blue light on the top of my head, with the loud bang, I knew that I'd been struck. I probably flew about two metres back, back into the boat. Right, is my heart going to stop any second now? I was really scared. I could hear Dan, the assistant producer, discussing whether to get a helicopter to evacuate me. Uh, we spoke to... We had literally half an hour from that moment to decide to call a plane to get us out or not. Problem was, the satellite phone is pretty reliable, but not 100% reliable. OK, can you hear me? You might not have a satellite actually in line of sight. You turn, the, you turn it on, you're looking at the bars that tell you, you know, whether you're going to get through or not. You're waiting, you're waiting, or you get through and it Have cuts. Can you hear me now? Hello? Luckily, we established fairly quickly that he was probably going to be all right. But just for um, a very short period of a couple of moments, just that, you know, really, really bad feeling that something terrible could have happened. It's these rubber soles that I believe is what took the brunt of the lightning strike going through me. I think if I was barefooted, I wouldn't be here today. Wouldn't be here today. You may be wondering why we kept filming in that situation. It seems a bit cold, maybe a bit heartless. 
But the fact is, as long as it wasn't getting in the way of giving assistance to Chris, making sure that he was all right, we were all, Chris included, very keen to document what was going on there because that's reality. It doesn't get any more real than that on these expeditions. But incredibly, that is not the first or the most terrifying time when something has happened and the camera has kept rolling.